So you want the best vlogging camera, you want full frame, you want a little bit of image stabilization, you want a nice flip out screen that also is a touch screen, you want a microphone input, you want great battery life, you want fast dual pixel autofocus, you want great low light performance, the Canon 6D2 gives it to you for around $1600 for the body only. It's the way I know, it's the best vlogging camera you can really get for the money if you wanna up your game. There's cheaper cameras, there's more expensive cameras, but this hits a sweet spot for the vlogging community. If you don't need 4K, and most vloggers don't, the 6D Mark II is a great way to go, and man, these cicadas are really noisy. We're testing the lock, the box is around Debbie's face, I tapped her face, I'll tap mine again. Should go right to me. It stays locked because it's in face detect. Hey guys, this is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com and today I am going to talk about this guy right here, the Canon 6D Mark II. Now this camera when it came out a while ago was very polarizing. Many of the reviewers trashed it, many YouTubers trashed it, many people in social media trashed it for one reason. When they saw the specs, they were like, you know, there's no 4K. Um, there's no in-body image stabilization, there's electronic image stabilization, um, and it didn't seem like much of an upgrade over the old gen 6D Mark I. Now, I reviewed the 6D Mark I years ago on the streets of New York with a Sigma art lens, I believe, and, and possibly a Canon 85 F1 II. I think that was the lens, I'll have to go back and look. But I really liked the 6D because it was full frame and it was much smaller than something like the 5D Mark IV. Um, of course, that was years ago, and Canon just updated it with this guy, and what did they give us in regards to upgrades? Well, mostly, this is what they gave us right here. They gave us this flip screen. So, for the ever popular vloggers out there, vlogging, Vlogging is becoming huge. There's like hundreds if not thousands of people a day creating YouTube channels for vlogging, just to vlog. And some people vlog about technology, some people do reviews. YouTube is going nuts with people who vlog, people doing camera reviews, and tons of people have reviewed the 6D. Uh, actually, when it came out and was announced, people trashed it. Some early reviews trashed it for low dynamic range and being not an upgrade to the 6D, saying it has soft video at 1080. Uh, some people said it's more like 720 video. Now, I'm filming this on a 1DX Mark II, which is my now jack of all trades camera. It will mostly do video work for me in and out of the house, and it's also gonna do some photo duty because after I used it for photos, I realized how amazing of a camera it is. And with these lenses I'm using it with, the 16 to 35 V3, the 24 F14L, and the 50L, the 1DX is quite amazing. For video though, this at 1DX has the all eye codec, so you're gonna get very good 1080 quality out of it, at least in my opinion from what I've been seeing. The 6D Mark II doesn't have that codec, so you're gonna get a little bit softer of a video out of it, though it's far from being mushy, as I've heard some people say. Now, the 6D Mark II also has a little bit of in-body stabilization, electronic image stabilization, and the funny thing is it works a little better than the Sony's five-axis sensor shift image stabilization that's in the body for video, on the Sony cameras, that 5-axis is actually kind of useless. It doesn't do anything like the Panasonic GH5, the Olympus EM1. It's very, very subdued and minor. 
And if you engage the electronic IS in this camera, you're actually getting some smoothing, though it will crop the frame a bit. It works just like the image stabilization in the M50. Now, some people are buying up the M50 for vlogging cameras. I own one here. It makes a great, small, lightweight, inexpensive, $600, not too inexpensive, but it's a lot cheaper than this guy. Vlogging camera, what are the limitations there? The M50 has an APS-C sensor. The 6D has a full frame sensor. So what does that mean? That means you're going to get footage like this. See when I hold up the camera here, I'm filming with a full frame camera. So that background is totally blown out. My subject here is in sharp focus and that is the center of attention. Okay, on an APS-C Canon M50, if I was shooting this with say the kit zoom, that depth of field would be much wider. So you would have much more in focus. Your subject wouldn't stand out. It wouldn't look as deep or rich. There is something, and I've been saying it for 10, 11 years, full frame sensors deliver a unique look, okay? With that Canon M50, you're also gonna get more image noise. It's not going to be nearly as good in low light. In low light, it gets pretty grainy. Um, and you have much smaller lenses, but none like what I'm shooting this on. Nothing like the 2414. Now, if you're wanting to up your game, the Canon 60 Mark II makes a great vlogging camera because of the full frame sensor. Your videos are gonna have that pop, that unique look, that rich look. And sure, you can do that with a Sony a7 III, but the problem with the a7 III is there's no flip screen. So if you're holding out the camera, you're just gonna pray that you're in focus and it's not missing or not focusing on something behind you. The Canon dual pixel autofocus is fantastic. In my opinion, the best there is out there in a camera. But with the 6D, you can make sure you are framing yourself correctly due to this right here. And currently, no Sony full frame camera offers that kind of screen. Um, so the 6D Mark II is fabulous in that regard. Full frame sensor, dual pixel autofocus, the Canon color science, uh, great battery life. Uh, what else? Great in low light. Um, as a matter of fact, for the $1,500 that I paid for this body, I'm trying to think of weaknesses. It has a weathered seal body, a body that's smaller, of course, than the 1DX Mark II and, and smaller than the 5D4. The 5D4 doesn't have a flip screen. So if you wanna up your game in vlogging, this is the camera you might wanna to graduate to when it's time to go that route, when it's time for you to make that decision. Um, you can use any camera for vlogging. Some people use their phones. Some people use the Sony RX100s. Some people use the Sony A63, 6500. Some people use the Canons. You can use whatever you like, but there are certain ingredients that need to be in a camera, in my opinion, for vlogging. And this screen right here is one of them. So the 6D Mark II is also great for photos. Uh, I was testing it out in low light and it was nailing focus in really low light conditions and the noise was barely there even when cranked up to 12,800. At 25,600 there was some grain but it still looked very sharp and still looked pretty dang good. Not that far off from the Sony. The Sony will give a little bit better low light performance but it's not that far off. So what was everybody complaining about this 6D for? I think because it was originally at 2000 or a little more, didn't have that 4K, didn't offer extended dynamic range that you would expect today. And the Sony came out at $2,000 for the a7 III that had great dynamic range, great low light, great autofocus, great battery, uh, and 4K video. So, who would buy the 6D2? I just pretty much explained it to everybody. If you're a vlogger and you want that flip out screen and you want full frame, guess what? This is the only camera in town right now that's going to give you full frame with a flip out screen that makes it easy for vlogging. So, so far my first early report of the 6D Mark II is actually quite nice. Um, I showed you some photos here, they look fantastic. 6D Mark II for vlogging and run and gun video, and you really can't go wrong. There's really not much bad to say at the price point of the Canon 6D Mark II.